Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Ustaz Amina Blake with the two amazing white Muslims, mashallah. And I've been asked to say this is the pinnacle of my career and my life, meeting these guys. I knew them before and actually they are rather amazing. So it's true. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'll do the translation. Do you want me to stop every so often so um, you can just confirm that everybody understands? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. These guys are laughing already. I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to Okay, so my name's um, Amina Blake, and um, I've been Muslim for. I feel like 27 years now. So 1992, I became Muslim. A long time ago. I'm not going to tell you how old I was when I became Muslim because you're going to do the calculation and then you'll know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my journey into Islam was very different. Mashallah, that's an amazing story. I've never heard a story like that before. Amazing. Um, so my journey into Islam was one of. Um, First of all, questioning um, what is the truth. So I was brought up as a Christian and I went to church, but I wasn't convinced by the Bible. I wasn't really convinced that the Bible was truly the word of God. Um, I'm a very logical person. If you say to me something is true, then you're going to have to prove it to me or I'm just not interested. And that's just me. Um, obviously quite a difficult teenager because of that. <laughs> so uh, I had, a, a, I was at a time of my life when I was 17, 18, where I was pretty unsettled and I used to go out night clubbing and I used to, you know, do all the stuff like, like that normal English girls do. Um, I came from a good background, alhamdulillah. My father was a a professor and my mother was an artist and poet um, in Sheffield um, but during my journey I met a lot of Muslims but didn't see any Islam such as life yes, <laughs> so yes. I went to school with Muslims I had friends who were Muslims but I didn't really see any Islam because these were Muslims who were not practicing they were just Muslim fil uh, isim so by the name and not by the 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 actions because i know i know malaysians you all learn arabic at, at school and stuff right yeah i know that <laughs> mashallah مش ممكن كله في العربي بس ممكن شوية يعني إنجليزي بالعربي الاثنين إن شاء الله تمام okay so uh, so I used to go night clubbing with um, a Muslim girl <laughs> yeah Pakistani Muslim girl um, who was quite a bit older than me and she she was a very very miskin طيبه she was a very nice person and I came to a point in my life where I had to leave the place where I was living um, and I didn't have anywhere to go. So the first thing she said was, like, my house is your house, come and live with me. So I went and I stayed with her. Now, in my parents' house, there were, of course, a lot of books because it's a professor of English language and linguistics. So there's a lot of books. But in her house, there was one book and it was the Quran. For the English, we're Arabic. For the Arabic, we're the English, we're listening, right? So I said to my friend, can, you, can, I, can I look? Can I, have a, can I have a look at this book? So I thought, oh, book, yeah, something to do. <laughs> Because there was no internet then. It's a long time ago. You, you guys, mashallah, none of you were born then. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, yeah, she said, you have to wash your hands first. Aww. She said, wash your hands first and then you can, it's, it's like a cultural Gosh. thing. Actually, it's not considered a mushaf because it's more English than Arabic. But she was being like respectful. She didn't really understand. So I was like, okay, no problem. Go and wash my hands. So I opened the Quran 
and I saw language and stories which reminded me of my Christian background. I saw the story of Ibrahim I saw the story of Yusuf and as a Christian I loved these stories because I learned about these stories in the church school. Yeah, so في الكنيسة في في مدرسة زي هذه بس في الكنيسة. أنا 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 كنت سريرة أنا كنت عندهم تمام تعلم ال Bible وكل شيء. There were the prophets in there, the same stories, very similar stories. So I saw them and I was like, wow, what is this? Because in the schools in England, the kids are taught Islam is something. Allah is a God and the Christian God is a different God. We didn't know that it's the same thing. Allah is God, God is Allah. I didn't understand that. So I asked questions to my friend. Okay, she says, that, oh, I said, what's the Quran? She said, it's the word of God, it's truth. So what did I say? When a delil. Where is the proof that this book is true? You're going to tell me this is Kalam Allah? Prove it. <laughs> she couldn't, of course, because she didn't have the, the, the ilm, the knowledge. So she um, asked her next door neighbor, who was this guy uh, who was uh, a Sufi brother, English. Now, at that time, there's not many white people who are Muslim. And so I looked at this guy and I was like, are you crazy? Like, what are you dressing like a, like a, like an ethnic? <laughs> and we going night clubbing, and you sitting with your with your uh, joysticks and you, you know this all this stuff going on. Mm, in the club. what are you crazy? But anyway, he, mashallah, he was a nice guy. So he said, I said, right, okay, prove to me that this is kalam Allah. This is the word of God, and. Tell me about this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I want to know. Now I'm going to move offline now. When you لو حد تدخل الإسلام لازم حد حب التاني. You have to have two things, two elements. العلم صح؟ إيش تاني؟ قلب. لازم قلب والإيمان. You have to have heart and you have to have knowledge. You have to have uh, علم. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at this time, he's giving me the ilm. Okay, so I said to him, prove this, this, this Quran is true. So he said, give me a couple of days. I'm going to go, I'm going to ask some people who have more knowledge than me. And I'm going to come back, I'm going to tell you. So I said, okay, so we waited a couple of days. He came back and he showed me the verses of the Quran, which are linguistic miracles and scientific miracles and the the how the the child is created in the the mother's belly and how it and this is stuff that's micros, microscopic mm -hmm. and he showed me the language and the mathematics and showed me how the uh the 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 the, the, the jebel is like a, a peg in the earth so geology and i was like wow this is amazing and then he told me something that was like the biggest thing what? which was Iman. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa calls Iman the, the sweetness. And it was like a warm bahar, like a warm feeling all the way down me. I'm not Muslim, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this as a gift. It's like, here you are, have a taste of this, and then you're gonna want more. So at that, that time, two things come together. Ilm, qalb, they come together. And I said to my friend, I want to become Muslim, I want to do it now. <laughs> I want to do it now. So she took so subhanallah. So she took me to the local masjid, which was the same one as her neighbour went to. And then maybe three days later I took my shahada. And that was the beginning of the journey. That was when I was born. And the rest is history. So that's my story. <laughs> Okay, so any questions now to either Andrea or to Amina? How was family acceptance? How was your, How was your family oh, acceptance? My, my, um, my, my, my birth children, my own children, 
um, were very accepting of it. Um, and uh, it's a funny story, really. I didn't, I hadn't really told anybody I didn't really need to, although I had learned to play and was snooking off quite a few times at family dues to do these things and trying to find places to play, which is probably why I'm quite good at finding places to play. Um, um, I, uh, somebody pointed out to me by this time who did know I was Muslim that if I died, I was going to be burnt because that's that's what they would do with me if I didn't tell people I was Muslim. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll quickly change my will. My, the, and so the first line of that was, you know, please, you know, bury me due to, you know, in the bounds of Islamic custom, some words like that. Now, my daughter being my daughter, wanting a bit more shopping money, saw my will on the side. Now, she didn't know I was Muslim, and she went, oh, let me... And obviously, she didn't know what it says in a will either. And so she took the will and thought, I'm just going to have a look and see how much you're leaving me, Mum. And she opened it, and I was just... It stood in my kitchen. A lot of things go on in my kitchen, actually. <laughs> stood in my kitchen. This is where I always am. And she just read the first line of my will. And I knew it. I knew it, she went really quite happily, she was fine, she said, oh, I knew something was going on, I knew it, she said, oh, congratulations, that's great, and then my son, my, my youngest son came in, oh, gosh, not more of that stuff, not more of that sub stuff, he was out. <laughs> okay, then, so that's not such a bad reaction, and we called in my uh, eldest son also, and he was like, oh, okay, mum, that's how you brought us up, you know, that you explore things, you look at things, you can accept things, and, and you know, it's, it's all okay. So my own children were absolutely beautiful and still are about it all. Um, I, you know, I think uh, sometimes it's a bit tough if we go to extended family uh, dues, they're all a bit, oh, did you uh, have to wear that scarf? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I do have to wear the scarf. I was actually invited to one wedding where funnily enough the British Army uh, quite a lot of it it felt like were going and they actually asked me not to wear my scarf so I chose the brightest pink one and went anyway <laughs> and I also and, and at that time I also insisted on somewhere to pray as well so and and proved a point really that we do all need to get on and uh, live together and put our prejudice aside now my mum and dad my mum was pretty nonplussed, didn't really have much to say, and uh, my dad, um, yeah, pretty much was it, yeah, he's still, he's still okay, didn't he? he? asked me lots of questions, told me my Arabic was rubbish, which it is. <laughs> 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 and, uh, uh, yeah, so I was very lucky about that. I was saying earlier that I have five birth sisters, and funny enough, I don't know if you're supposed to have favourite sisters, but my favourite sister is the only sister that wasn't as accepting as the rest of my sisters. And uh, so we sometimes have a few issues. Uh, if we have a family do, I'm not allowed to take halal meat into her, her house. Uh, she won't put the dog out when I go round, which is more fear of the dog than being Muslim. But anyway, <laughs> she still doesn't put it out for me. And... Um, uh, but uh, by the same school, she does buy me beautiful scarves at Christmas time, admittedly. Oh. And I thank you for my winter gift. I say thank you. <laughs> so uh, I um uh, and also my, my my one best friend who is still non-Muslim. I'm working on her. Uh, yes, she was fine as well. So uh, I, I believe I've been um, blessed absolutely blessed with the people who are around me and mm -hmm. hope one day they become mm -hmm. Muslim, inshallah. Inshallah, <laughs> and inshallah. Well, my family, they were... Um, my father said it's a phase that you're going through. <laughs> 27 years later, it's a pretty long phase. Mum <laughs> um, was more scared of me becoming... See, the, see, at the time, especially, but even maybe now, Muslims were seen from through cultural eyes. So people didn't see Islam, they saw culture. So f what my mum and dad had seen from Muslims, and the majority of Muslims in the UK are South Asian, um, some Arab, some Somali, but at that time they, were, they weren't really Somali. Somalis didn't come into the UK until the 90s. So what they would see in the uh, predominantly Asian communities was what actually isn't an Islamic tradition at all of women walking behind their husbands, like 10 paces behind their husbands and sitting in the back of the car with the kids in the front. And women actually had, Muslim women had a reputation of being quite oppressed 
and a very um, male dominated society. Women aren't allowed to speak. They're not allowed to be independent. They're not allowed to. And me being me, as you can see, I'm pretty loud and pretty independent. And my mum was like, aren't you scared of being oppressed? Like you're gonna be oppressed. You're gonna be stuck in the house. Muslim women can't leave the house. You're gonna be married with like a thousand kids with you. You're not gonna be able to work. You're not gonna be able to do anything. You're gonna be under the lum. She was worried. Of course, every parent yeah. is gonna be worried about this, right? Because if yeah. that's what you've seen from a community, yeah and you don't really know that community very well, all you know is what you see, yeah. then you're gonna put a stereotype on that community, whether it's correct or incorrect is a different matter. Yeah. So this is what she was worried about. But as time went on, she realized that Islam was stabilizing me and was actually making me to a much better daughter yeah. because of the duties nice. that you know Muslims have towards their parents <clears throat> actually as a new Muslim I wasn't great because I started off being like as new Muslims especially those I don't I don't know if it's the same when you became Muslim but you you like want to convert everybody and save everybody and you become like this Quran basher <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of like you're preaching to your parents and you're preaching to everybody else and you just like trying to get them all because you've got found this amazing thing and you love them so much you want them to have it too yeah. actually what you don't realize is that's a terrible form of dawah and does so much damage so i think i did a lot of damage at the beginning by being too pushy too strong but once i settled into myself um i'd say probably that took me i would say about three years, four years. Mm. And then I went through the uh, trying to be a Pakistani phase. And then I tried to be an Arab. And then I realized that actually I'm an English Muslim. Mm. And so then I found my culture <laughs> again, my, my Englishness again. And then I was fully settled. I was okay then. So yeah, but that pe my friends, I lost all my friends oh. when I became Muslim. Uh, we made new friends. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isolated me for a while and made me search. Can I tell you a story? Do you want to hear, do you want to hear it? Can I tell you, tell you a story? The story, subhanAllah, is obviously when I became Muslim, my friends were not practicing, right? I didn't, the hijab for them was just something for the um, Arabs, because my friends were Pakistani. So hijabs for the Arabs. Yeah. And actually in the UK then, the the uh, the uh, Jama'a, the re revival, the Islamic revival was just very early. It just came in the late earth, early 90s. So the hijab wasn't understood properly as something that's Islamic. It was seen as a cultural Arabi thing. So um, I didn't know how to practice Islam and I wanted so desperately to pray. I wanted to learn how to pray, but there was no way for me. Every time I asked my friends, they would say, inshallah. You know, you're talking about inshallah. Okay, let's, let's look at inshallah, shall we? There is the Muslim inshallah, and then there's the Islamic inshallah. And they're kind of very different things, right? The Muslim inshallah is, actually the answer is no, but I want to make you feel good. <laughs> yeah. The Islamic inshallah is, I will do it unless I die. <laughs> or unless Allah yeah. prevents me in some other way. So I was getting the Muslim, inshallah. And so um, I was friends with a, very close friends actually, with a Pakistani family whose, their father, the uncle, he was very practicing, mashallah. He used to come into the house and he would make his wudu in the kitchen sink and then he would come and he would pray in front of this you know, these old fashioned gas fires, mm. yeah, that on the wall. He would come and pray every day in there. And I was desperate to learn how to pray. And I used to make dua. I'd say, Ya Allah, please, just give me somebody who's going to teach me. Somebody who's going to especially teach me how to pray. And time went on, time I kept making the dua, making dua. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was delaying it. Why? So that I could get close to Him. I was asking him, I was talking to Allah, because very often new Muslims, we don't understand, or we're maybe a little bit shy to talk to Allah directly yeah. and to treat Allah like he's our best friend. 
We, we take that spiritual side out. So Allah was teaching me, talk to me, ask me, be direct. So I asked, asked, asked. And then everyone was saying, inshallah, inshallah, nothing. I was, oh. So one day I went down to this phone box. I had a phone in my house, but it was like one way phone. You couldn't call out from it. I had to call my parents. I went to this phone box and the, the area that I lived in was a bad area, rough, really rough. So I went and I stood outside this phone box and inside the phone box, there's this mixed race guy and he was huge, six foot two, six foot three. And he looked kind of fierce. And I was a little bit, oh man, because not a good area. Had a lot of drugs, a lot of prostitution, a lot of, you know, attacks and things. So I looked and he looked at me and I was like, oh man, I'm so dead. <laughs> he opens the phone box door, looks out and says, you Muslim. So how did he know that I was Muslim? I didn't know about hijab, but I'd been told by my Pakistani friends, you've got to wear Pakistani clothes. And that's what makes you Muslim. <laughs> so I had these Pakistani clothes on, but they didn't fit. Because English, I'm tall. My friends, they were, they were short. Yeah? So I had these cuts like this. <laughs> halfway up my legs <laughs> and it was canary yellow with brown oh. piping oh. awful <laughs> so the guy looks at me Are you muslim and i was like oh i'm dead now i was like yes looked at him yes <laughs> so he said wait there now i had two choices i could wait or run, <laughs> or run. i was too scared to run so i just stood there anyway so he makes this phone call and I was like, okay, he's calling the mafia to kill me, man. <laughs> Makes this phone call, sticks the phone out of the phone box. He said, come here, sister. I need you to talk to this sister, Sister Tracy. Oh, wow. wow. So Tracy was... She sister Tracy. Before, you know? So I got on the phone to this sister, Tracy, and she She's was... She's also a libertista. She was a dare, she's a dare, yeah. And she was running um, Muhadarat and, and uh, Usra and, you know, circles and stuff. So we got to know each other. She taught me. She's the first one who uh, made me teach. And then, subhanAllah, you know, time went on from there. So she became my best friend. So I'm still, she's still my best friend now, subhanAllah. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, showed me how to pray. But actually, again, with, with, with Islam, you have the, the ilm and the hikmah, right? Mm -hmm. And the ilm and the, and the iman, the qalb. So I kind of knew that I had to pray, but I needed a push from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I was talking about the uncle. Yeah, you remember the yeah. uncle who was doing his salah in front of the fire? Subhanallah, one day I got a phone call from his daughter. She said, my dad's had a heart attack and he's in hospital and I need, you need you, we need you to come. And so I went down to the hospital, Northern General Hospital, and I got there and there's nobody there. And so I spoke to the doctors, like, like where, is, where is the family? Where, where are these people? I need to see them, the, the, the guys had a heart attack. And so she took me into a little room now, you know at a hospital, when they take you into that little room that's got flowers and tissues on the table, yeah. it's not good. No. So they took me into the room and they said, like, we're really sorry. He passed away. He died. Mad it. Mm. I was like, subhanAllah. So I went straight to the house. They, they called me later and they said, okay, we're going to have the janaza. Now, in Pakistani culture, and in a lot of Muslim cultures, we you have... a when you have a janaza, people want to see the, the deceased first, right? Like, and they bring them home. Now, in English culture, you're not allowed to see death at all. Especially if you're middle class. Not allowed to see death. I know I wasn't allowed to my grandfather's funeral. I'd never seen a dead body in my life. So these, this family, they invited me. And they said, you need to come because he, he, you really got on with him. And, you know, he, you were like a daughter for him. I was like, okay. So I walked into the room and on a stand in the middle of the room, there's this coffin. Never saw a coffin in real life before. <laughs> I was terrified. Because what am I thinking? I'm thinking Dracula films, man. Because yeah. <laughs> I didn't have anything else. I was really scared. And my friend, she, she 
hold my hand and she pulled me and I had my eyes closed and I didn't want to look at this dead face. And she said, it's okay, just look. And I opened my eyes and I saw the uncle and wallah al as I'm sitting here now, there was noor in his face and he was smiling, just like sleep. And I looked at him and I knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like inspired me. This is the result of the salah. This is the result of the prayer. Yeah. And I, then I remembered him praying and I was determined then. So I got a book and I would stand in the house learning the prayer from this book. And eventually, alhamdulillah, I learned how to pray. But after I saw his body, I never missed a prayer from then till now, subhanAllah. Because I understood then the importance of salah from the akhirah, mm -hmm. from the barzakh. Allah was showing me, this is what you're going to get. If you pray, this is, what, this is going to be you. You're going to be smiling. SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. So that's my prayer journey. Uh, just like so we really hope you enjoyed that. For the 21 video series, everything you ever wanted to know about Islam and the Muslim culture, but couldn't be bothered to ask, click the link in the top right of the screen. Also, please subscribe by clicking the red button below if you haven't already done so. We want to reach as many people as we possibly can. Thank you once again for your support and we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah.